well, taken aback, I think it's fair to say. When did you first get word of all this? Uh, I first got official word, like everybody else today. Um, I went to Colin about a week and a half ago, and we talked about it. He didn't suggest to me then that he was going to take the job or that he was looking for the job, but I did say it to some other friends afterwards that um, uh, I think if someone had come knocking on his door, he wasn't going to say no to them. That was the impression I got uh, in our conversation. Mm. Have a listen. This is O'Rourke just on uh, June of this year, just last month. Mm. He was an RTE and this was shortly after Andy McAtee had uh, walked away from the job and he was asked about it, as you might imagine, on RTE. And it was pretty clear he didn't have huge interest, certainly publicly at that stage. Have a listen. I'm involved in club management. I'm very happy in club management and I have been for quite a while. And this isn't something you this sort of speculation. Like I did actually go for the me job on three occasions in the past. And even somebody as stupid as I am would get the hint that when you're told no on three occasions, I think that should put it to bed. And my beautiful wife, Patricia, has a very uh, negative view towards managing the county team, and with good reason. When you see the sort of upshot from Andy McIntyre going and the social media abuse that has taken place, I think a lot of people would uh, stand back and say, is this the sort of trend that we want to go with Gaelic football, that people who put in enormous time on at their own expenses, not like Pep Guardiola getting 15 million a year and then being subjected to that sort of thing by unnamed sort of people. Like, I can't understand in a society how we can allow people to abuse others without having given their name and address and everything else. It's, ju- it's just a shocking indictment of society in general. So that was him in June, Liam. Life is funny. Yeah, life is funny and it, it comes in circles very fast. I mean, I think there's an awful lot of truth, obviously, Joel, to what Colin was saying there and, and the degree to which uh, Andy McIntyre was subjected to the sort of abuse that he was subjected to. Um, I, I'd be pretty certain that Colin was speaking from his heart, uh, you know, when he, when he said those words, that he wasn't going to actually go for the job. But, you know, when Colin and I sat down for lunch last week and we've been, we've been old football bullies and, and playing with screen and me for 30 years and, and more. I mean, we, we know each other a long time. I was able to say to him, what on earth are you, what on earth are you managing Simonstown again for at your age? I mean, Christ, have you not more things to do with your life? Uh, and he volunteered very quickly, ego. He said, uh, you know, when you're offered a job, the ego kicks in and you say, I'll do a good job on that. And I'd say it was very much the same with me, to be honest with you. I think, you know, um, this is a very... Um, this is a very important appointment. Everybody in Mead knows that, and Colin will know that and knew that better than anybody. It's, a, it's an absolutely vital time in the history of the county. If they, don't, if they didn't make the right appointment, then Mead you know, could go... Well, they've been going through the floorboards for a long time, and that's no disrespect to Mick O'Dowd or Andy McIntyre or people who were there before. They, they did their level best but the county's record is that it's officially going through the floorboards and will be out of sight uh, at some time in the near future if something is not done. So I think Colin was aware of that, Joe. And I think when people knocked on his door uh, and, they, uh, and he was asked to do the job, um, uh, I think like everybody else in Mead, if he felt you were up to it, I think he, said he felt it was his duty to do it. Mm. And also he wanted to do it. It's, it's an ego thing. I mean... You look at all the managers at county level. It's a, it's a privilege to manage a county at county level. I got, managed, I got to manage Carlo for two years, my dad's home county. And I remember walking around the training field some nights thinking, isn't this fantastic? Mm. There's only a few from the country. I may be Division 4 in Carlo, but, you know, I love this job. And to manage Mead for a, for a Mead, for a Mead man is a very proud thing to do. And Colin is a very proud man. And um, obviously he just couldn't say no. Yeah. He said there himself he'd applied three times before and, and you, mm-hmm. used, you used the phrase there that when he was approached and, and it would be my assumption as well that he was approached that he didn't think well I'm going to apply for a fourth time and at the age of 65 they'll suddenly think I'm the right man for the job. So it does suggest maybe he was approached somewhat unexpectedly. It begs the question a touch Liam what have they been doing for the last 15, 20 years? Well it does beg the question Joe I mean what like, it's inexcusable. Um, it's inexcusable for counties like Meath and Kildare to throw their hands up in the air and, and point fingers at Dublin and feel sorry for themselves. And Meath and Kildare are two prime counties. The populations of 300,000-plus in both counties. 
they're right adjacent to Dublin. They have every immunity available to them. Mead and Kildare, you know, should not be in the second tier, stuck in the second tier. I mean, we've won tier in Gaelic football. I'm talking about, not talking about yesterday's game and Armagh and Galway and what they've done this year. I'm talking over the last number of years. Mm. The top tier is Dublin, Tyrone, Kerry and Mayo. And then there's a second tier. And me, they're in that second tier of six or seven, eight teams. And they've been existing and living in that tier happily. But that's a dangerous place to live because a county can very quickly run out of belief and it can very quickly run out of an understanding that it has a right to win. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it can give up on that right. And I think what's happened to me over the last 10 years is that I talk about Andy McIntyre or Mick O'Dowd or the group of players, the county as a whole has given up on that right. And that's a dangerous thing for me to be in. And I think that's why this appointment for the, for the people of me, but also for Gaelic football generally, uh, it was absolutely, it was, a, it was a vital appointment, a very important appointment. Uh, Colm is the right man. Um, that's nothing against Bernard Flynn. I know Bernard was very interested in the job. Um, Bernard would have been a good manager, but Colm is the right manager at this time. And, you know, you just look at the cycles, Joe, and Mead, in Mead history. It, Mead won the first All-Ireland Finals in 49 and 54. It was a little bit of a wait until 1967. It was a little bit of a wait until 87 and 88. Two more All-Ireland Finals came in 96 and 99. And then nothing. One Leinster Final in 2010. So there's a lot of things that are wrong about the structures in Mead football for that to happen. And it's not just Colm O'Rourke. He doesn't have a bag of magic dust. He's going to have to put in places. And I think he will copy Jim Gavin and learn from Jim and understand what Jim Gavin has done. He has to make a lot of critical appointments around him. And he's got to build a team. He's got to ensure structures are in place for the next four or five years. And luckily, when people say that he's, he's possibly the oldest manager ever appointed to a first-time inter-county job, that's possibly a good thing, Joe, because you know managing a county team is a full-time is, is a full-time job. I mean, Colin is at a stage where I have no notion of how he's going to retire from his day job as a mm. school principal. But if he did, um, if he did, he doesn't have a young family anymore. Uh, his kids are reared and married and have their own children. He will have the time in the next five years to make sure that the best possible job is done because it will take 60, 70 hours a week to build Mead up to where they should be. 60, 70 hours a week. When I was managing Carlo, as I said before, 10, 15 years ago, I was doing 30 hours a week. I was doing 60 hours a week in my day job, 30 hours a week managing Carlo. And even though Carlo begged me to stay, and they really wanted me to stay, believe it or not, um, I said to them that I can't do the job. I can only half do the job in 30 hours a week. Mm. I need to devote 60 hours a week to Carlo in Division 4 to get them right. So when you look at need, this is a 60, 70 hour a week job. And Colin, hopefully, will be the right man to do it. I, I've heard the Mead County Board uh, criticised down the years and lots of county boards are and I'm sure it's worth saying that lots of people in there must be working very diligently in the best interest of mm -hmm. Mead football but it, it has been a board which has been criticised and uh, late last year Andy McEntee uh, you would think he was almost fatally undermined by that county board vote against him and he had to go to the clubs and win their approval and he got another year but that just can't help a manager's authority and what McEntee said about that situation subsequently on a BBC podcast is mm -hmm. that quote Irrelevant people in the background were trying to make themselves relevant, end mm. quote. Uh, that pointed to a slightly dysfunctional uh, situation. How will Colm O'Rourke handle that, do you think, if that is the case? Oh, with a very strong hand. I mean, I, I don't doubt. The Mead County Board is no different than most county boards. They're nearly all dysfunctional, Joe. It's the manner in which the GA is structured. It's a dysfunctional organisation. As Jimmy Gray whose book we published recently said the GA is the most democratic organisation in the history of the world, and that's its greatest weakness. Mm. Um, and, that's, and that's what you've seen in Mead. A lot of good people in Mead, a really lot of good people, sound people who love Mead football. Um, but you just have to say, OK, what has happened in the last 10 years? How many managers have we had? Five or six. What have we won? Uh, how has the squad developed? And you can see it hasn't worked, no matter how hard anyone has tried. Colin is a very strong character. Uh, he doesn't suffer fools. Uh, if Colin is in the job and he is being undermined by anyone, uh, Colin will hand that job back to someone very quickly. Right. I can promise you that. Right. He won't put up with it. He'll hand it back to him within six months. Colin will want to get things done his way. And he has a proven track record. I mean, at, 
club level in need, he's won championships. At schools level, he's won all Ireland championships. He's won, you know, the international rules with Ireland. Now he never should have been Ireland manager, and I've said that to him to his face, and I've written it myself because the Irish manager's job was handed out to whoever came in the door next there for about 10 years. I mean, Colm got it, Paul Early got it, Anthony Tohill got it, I don't know who else got it. But they weren't giving it to the best managers in the country, which was a farce. Um, and Colm didn't deserve that job. But when he got it, he proved his mettle and, and he won both series here and in Australia. So he's a record of being a very successful and astute manager. And um, But the most important thing, as I said before, is who he appoints are around him. Mm. You know, Stephen Bray and Barry Callaghan are very sound people. But they're just two more people. He needs he needs a backroom team of real merit, uh, of real backbone. And um, if Colin doesn't get what he wants, uh, Mead will be in bigger trouble in six months' time. I'm pretty sure of that. It was interesting in that clip I played from a month ago. He mentioned the online abuse of McEntee and how you know mm-hmm. his own wife says, "Jesus, not worth it." How do you think he will um, handle the inevitable abuse? Well, I don't think Colin will be tweeting and, and checking Facebook very often. I think that will go way over his head. Okay. Um, I think he just leave that to the fairies. Okay. I mean, it's just stuff that, it, you know, it's, it's stuff that it, he, won't, he won't even allow to entertain him. Uh, again, as I say, in his household, it's him and Patricia. You know, he's got grandkids now. He is, he's lived it all. He's seen it all. And, and that's why I say, and I'll say it because he's a good friend of mine, mm. uh, this was a vital appointment. And luckily, Mead appointed the right man with the right strength of character with the right wisdom um, and with a knowledge of what's happening in the county. I mean, he's lived in the county all his life. I'm living in Dublin 30 years. He knows 10 times more about Mead football than I would know. Um, and he has never stopped volunteering and working at football in Mead. Never stopped volunteering. Right, so right. his heart's in his right place and he's got, the, he's got the right head and the shoulders to get the job done. Now, what Mead will do, and that, I wouldn't say that they're not going to do anything amazing fast. However, We've had a very interesting year culminating in yesterday's game, Joe. And, you know, we've seen Dublin come back and notch. They've lost, lost the last two All-Irelands. They're still going to be an incredible team for the next 10 years. But Dublin now are, quote-unquote, beatable. Um, they're as, you know, vulnerable as they've ever been in 10 years. So uh, suddenly need, if they, get their, if they get their act together, they can look and target Dublin in the next two, three, four years and say, OK, you know, we can take Dublin. Uh, and that has to be their number one ambition. You know, meet, meet people exist to bring Dublin to their knees. It's what we're brought up on. Mm. Uh, it's what we're reared on. Um, it's Dublin first and last. Nothing else counts. It's all about Dublin and, and that's what Colin would be thinking and that's what his players would be thinking and nothing else but that. And, you know, touch wood, yeah. if, they, if they get things right, um, you know, they can, they can take Dublin scalp and it won't happen in the next 12 months. Could happen in the next two or three years. I guess it'll be interesting for you to watch it all unfold. Uh, if you don't mind me mentioning, I always remember you uh, tell a story uh, which maybe speaks to your friendship and the type of man O'Rourke is. That after the passing of your brother, uh, he was mm. he was at your door. Was it a week later to drag you to training and, and to not let you uh, withdraw into yourself? Yeah, I mean, Colin. Like I lost my older brother, and Colin for a long period became an older brother to me. But it, it started. It started on a, on a screen under 21 team. Uh, we got to a county final under 21. Colin was four years older than me. Uh, and that county final, which we lost to Waterstown, Colin was 20 and I was 16 and we were both midfield. So we sort of had a bond ever since then. Um, you know, um, when Jared died, life in our local football field and, you know, a week or 10, but two weeks later, we, there was a game in that same field. Um you know, I, the last time we have been in the field was when they found Jared's body. Um, so it took a lot of courage for Colin to come and knock on my door and tell my mother and father, where is he? And to come in and to tell me, get your bag, I'm bringing you down to the field and I'm not saying no. And that's what he did. He pretty much marched me down to the football field and, um, and stood by me and sat by me and we tugged out together and, and he walked out onto the field with me mm. uh, to make sure that I achieved that first step I suppose, back. It was a very early step after two weeks. But, uh, you know, Colin has, has made a lot of friends and enemies uh, in his life as a, as a, as a pundit, an RTE and from the Independent. But um, anybody who knows him knows what a strong person he is. Mm. Is that the kind of thing you've ever had to literally say thanks for or is it just unspoken and understood? Uh, it's, un- 
it's unspoken and understood. I mean, you know, Colin, myself, you know, when you know when we finished up playing, we don't meet very often. We may, may, might meet for lunch once a year. Um, we don't need to say very much to each other. Mm. Um, I remember when we got to our first All Ireland final in '87. We the team met up in Malahide in the Grand Hotel in Malahide uh, on the morning and. Uh, uh, we parked our cars. We just happened to park our cars at the same time in the hotel to meet the rest of the lads. And um, and I remember we got out of our cars and we just looked at one another. And we walked into the hotel and there wasn't a word spoken. But I always remember that look. We looked at one another and it was like that looked at everything. There was 10 years of football in that look at each other and saying, can you believe it? We're actually about to play in an All-Ireland football final. So there's things, you know, when you soldier with somebody for so long there's things you don't need to um, you don't need to say to them yeah I can imagine and come here you're not going in as a selector here are you as some kind of dream ticket well thanks be to God uh, I haven't got a phone call yet either to be a stats man <laughs> or to be a water boy or to be a physio or anything no <laughs> and uh, Sean Boylan phoned me two weeks ago uh, actually to tell me some, uh, someone was dead it's normally when Sean and myself are conversations, now he reports to me that someone's dead. But mm. when the call came through, I said, holy God, he's either two things. He's on some secret organization trying to appoint a new lead manager and he's going to ask me to consider it. <laughs> or worse still, he's going to ask me to be on the organizing committee to appoint a new lead manager. Um, but neither, neither <laughs> was the case. It was just because of, uh, somebody had died. Yeah, OK. Well, listen, uh, I'm sure you'll be looking on with interest like the rest of us. Thanks so much, Liam, for coming on and give us your, your, your sense of the situation. Appreciate it.